Okay, for this one, I'm gonna start with my panel and I'm going to uh, just make a Voronoi window. Want to pretty much have it basically set up in a model. Uh, what I'm going to use, I'm actually really going to base everything off of sort of replacing these mullions a little bit in the model. And I'm going to explode this surface. But I don't exactly have to, but it's going to be very useful for this uh, model. I'm going to create a layer called GH where I'll put my uh, grasshopper window and also my grasshopper panel and fix that. So now what I can do is just uh, take my different surfaces and I'll put one surface at a time. And I'll set one surface and I'll set the other surface. I'll um, create another surface so it's simple. And we're going to make a Voronoi surface on this pattern. Um, so the way we do it is we'd really be going from surface to vector. We're going to create populate 3D. And though this is sort of a plane, because of uh, the orientation, it's typically set to populate on one plane on that great base plane or or you know another so the region that I'm going to use is the surface that I have here and I already have like a count there's also a seed so for randomization and also I could have a existing list of points so I'm going to do this one um, and I'm going to do show you that you know the idea is you could do both of them at the same time by using shift and when you connect it I can use control to separate that essentially we want to turn this into Voronoi so the Voronoi function would be what I would use next. Uh, Voronoi <clears throat> is something that's already sort of set up in the functionality of, of working with uh, meshes. And you could just <clears throat> simply create a Voronoi from your mesh command. And all it needs is the points. And you see the sort of surface, the bounds goes all the way out. And you really want to use the surface that you will start it with for that base for annoy. And one way to also simplify this is to create a sort of in-between surface. So I can always switch this because this <coughs> data object will be needed in multiple functions. So it'll be needed here. And also will be needed for my boundary, but the boundary is actually supposed to be a rectangle. So the way to get the, um, the surface bounding uh, we'll just really need to do a uh, sort of replacing of the rectangle that comes from this surface <clears throat> and so that's it's a little bit of an advanced function uh, what you would the way you do it is you would really just get the b rep edges and that's also um, sort of located really uh, in the surface where you're needing those edges and pretty much when I get those edges, they're going to be broken down into just one, 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 one. So I need to join them. And so join is from the curve menu. So that's a, essentially a, <clears throat> a utility um, where we can join those curves. And I'll join those naked curves. And I'll, we'll bring this down a little bit. And when those curves are joined, now I have a boundary that's a rectangle. And I'll stick that into my boundary. So we now have the, the boundary for that sort set of um, points. And so what I can do with these little lines, and these are all really polygons, I could turn them into planar surfaces. And <clears throat> done with the surface, uh, menu, pretty much where we're uh, able to uh, use um, sort of a edge surface where we could either break those down or we could just go really from a curve. Uh, <clears throat> and so just using that boundary sets gives us a one 
trimmed surface for each one of these. And what we can do um, as well is from these little polygons, we can also use pipes. And so pipes are a um, sort of some, it's a tool in Rhino as well as off Rhino. And uh, essentially, you know how, how we did with the volumes, you just take these curves and we come in here. And unfortunately, they take a long time to render. So that's why I try to always reduce having too much of those. And sometimes they'll like go a little bit long. So you'll have to sort of maybe edit a little bit later as well. We'll go back into Grasshopper and make sure uh, it's not lost. Okay. And so uh, because of this proper setup, this type of uh, whatever we, you know, if we rotate it, it should still be functional for us. We, if we plug in two, you can actually do both of them um, <clears throat> by way of being a group. And so that's, uh, or a list. And so just be mindful if, if something is going running twice, that it's going to, of course, take twice the time. And so that's my finished product there. And what I want to do for this is I'd want to export these into different layers. With my pipes, I could go ahead and export, and that, that's going to become Rhino Geometry because the Grasshopper Geometry closes when we close the Grasshopper model. But I can go ahead and just export these to my um, this pipe to my GH um, panel. And we're just going to turn that into a big group. And then I will take my surfaces and to make those into windows, I'm going to bake them and I'm going to choose the window. I'm going to make them a group. You also have some other options for decoration, display, or uh, different modes, but I'm going to leave them as it is. Just the basic. I click OK. I'll save this document as Voronoi Windows. And <clears throat> be mindful again, the plugins are sort of advanced. When you put your uh, mouse over sort of uh, input, it does give you some insight. If you put the wrong type of information in, um, you will get a note. For instance, if I just wanted uh, this surface to go directly into the boundary, I would get an issue <coughs> um, at my other side. And it's even like sort of still processing that big function. We'll turn off pipe so we can avoid having too much um, trouble. So that's another thing. Again, Grasshopper is sort of big, so be mindful of that. <clears throat> Make sure to jump back in the Grasshopper. Sort of hit that there a little bit, but it's red. And I'm going to turn off my pipe. Uh, it's red because the type of geometry that it wanted is going to be a proper boundary rectangle. and some reason in, in this plane it works, but in this plane it didn't. That's why I turned the B rep edge into the um, join curve rectangle here. But if you have an issue with anything, it's good to know that you can click on a you know box above and it'll tell you. It says data conversion fell from surface to rectangle, and that's the reason for this function right here. Just plug that back in, and you see it works fine. Okay, and again, when we save our function, we could either just close Rhino, uh, it's Grasshopper plugin, uh, and we're back to the main Rhino. You see the part that we baked, it's in the model. We can see it, shade it, and we can treat it just like any normal material. Of course, because it's a lot of geometry, you know, it would take a little time to render. But um, we could, of course, uh, if we want to even go into the rendered mode, we could turn our, our window into glass. There we have our nice ability to uh, just watch you know, that parametric design in a model. So another nifty tool in Rhino to use your project. You can always see my links for more classes on Grasshopper. Descriptions.